Hey guys, Josh, Happy Little Landscapes. Today we came back, we did an 18 by 24 inch canvas. It turned out fan freaking tastic. So if you, sir, or you, ma'am, want to learn how to paint this painting, I know you do. I know you do, that's why you're here. If you want to learn how to paint this painting right here, stick around. We need four colors, we need about six brushes, and we're going to get started just like this. Roll it. Just four colors today are going to go uh, Alizarin Crimson, Prussian Blue, Midnight Black, and Titanium White. Today we'll probably need our one and two inch Brop Ross blender brushes. That's a tongue twister if you say it fast enough. A uh, couple fan brushes, palette knife, maybe a liner brush, maybe a little filbert brush. But in the meantime, I don't even know what we're going to go with with the sky. So let's just sort of make it up as we go along, right? That's how I do with the majority of my paintings. We make them up as we go along. So why don't we do just a little bit of crimson up in the sky over here. This stuff grows on you very quickly, so you don't need a whole lot of paint to get, you know, a lot of color up on the canvas. You do like a... Trying to do something like this. A little circle of blue over here. And we're just going to kind of blend it out into the rest of our crimson sky. And we're going to leave the, the middle mainly white. And as soon as I get done finishing the edges on all this, we can lock the canvas down so it won't move. Uh, a little bit of blue over here. Blend all the rest of that in. This might even be covered by the mountains that we put on there. You never know. Never know. But I want it to be real dark and very colorful. So we're going to use a little bit more paint up in the sky than we normally would. And then we're going to come over this side. What do we always say, guys? That my YouTube followers know. We color. Uh, Finish the sides. That's what we do. We got to finish the sides. You never know if somebody's going to buy your painting and they're going to leave it, you know, or hang it unframed. So finish the edges. You never, ever know. I'd probably say about 70% of my paintings get bought unframed. So if you don't finish the sides, then it looks unfinished. I'll just go all the way down to the bottom. My YouTube followers are going to be painting along with me. Didn't give our Facebook followers really a lot of time. You can always save the video. You can always come back. It'll always be on the channel. And we're just going to go four colors today and see if we can't just make something look neat. <clears throat> so we started with our Crimson, then our blue, left this area a little bit white, and then blue again, and we're going to go just midnight black and fill up the rest of the sky with the midnight black. All right, see if we can't create this depth into our little circle here. And it may not come out how we want. It may turn out better than how we want it. So, only way you're ever going to know is if you try, right? you got to try. Try it out. I don't want to make it too dark down here in the bottom. It'll be hard to blend our road in. So we'll just finish it off. Things almost staying high to see the top. Finish it off and put a little bit of black up in that corner up there. And then we'll just crisscross strokes, blend it till we can't really tell. You know, you don't want these real hard lines. We're going to go cover it with clouds and stuff anyway. But you don't want a lot of hard lines in this painting when you're doing your sky. Drop the rest of these colors down here and that will leave some shadows for our snow when we get down that far. If we ever make it that far. Take a step back. You always got to step back and look at it. When you're up close, it's real hard to kind of judge if you blended it enough, I've got the light over here. It makes a little bit of glare. It's nice and clear for you guys, but for me, it's a little hard to see sometimes. So, didn't wash the brush. Once we go over this bottom area and you pick up some of that liquid white, it just kind of brightens up the whole rest of your sky when you're blending. <clears throat> I think now we can lock this sucker down. Who knows? Maybe we'll throw a little moon or a 
sun or something. Maybe we'll leave it. You never know. I just want a little bit of pinkish up here. You can do a little bit more crimson around this side. So we have this, it's kind of easier to see on the camera. And we have this uh, little progression from our dark, dark light, dark light, all the way into our light down here. And we can go back and forth, take out all the brush strokes, blend all the sky nice and clear together. Well, now we got some of our crimson down here in the bottom. Doesn't matter, always start at the top and then come down, right? You don't have to focus on what the bottom looks like in the beginning. Just let it fly, man. Make a mess, let it fly. We're gonna clean our brushes now. We have our gently used cups of Jasco brush cleaner. Uh, you can use low odor mineral spirits, paint thinner. I've seen people use Dawn dishwashing liquid and water and a little, you know, little scrubber deal to get them clean. Totally up to you. I feel the brush cleaner gets it a lot cleaner. So then we've got our gently used beater bucket. You see it up here on this camera, see it over there on that camera. It's got a golf ball basket down in the bottom of it, and that way we can kind of beat the devil out of the brush, get it clean. So whenever you see me dip down out of frame, it's because we're cleaning our brushes nice and clean. See that, everybody? Everybody? Everybody see? Okay. Let's throw that over here. Let's take our brush strokes out. We'll see where we're going to go. You never know. You might even want it darker up in there, but we'll, we'll throw some dark clouds and that'll kind of counteract. So we don't have don't have many colors to work with today. Not that we don't have them, I've got a whole box of colors, but today we're going to go with these colors here. So in order to make our shadowy colors, why don't we get a little bit of the blue, a little bit of the crimson, and just mix them on the brush into this kind of purpley color. And who knows, maybe we've got a big old honking mess of a cloud. Let's throw the black in there too. Just make it really stand out. And all we're doing guys, the guys that have painted with me before, they're literally making a mess on the canvas and then we're going to show you how to kind of make it look like a realistic looking cloud. Again, we're going to try to leave our little lighter area in here. The more we're going to blend these the more it's going to cover everything. So, you know, you never know what's going to be covered, what's going to end up not being covered. So don't stress about it. Why don't we just take, shoot, we can even take a little cloud right in there over our little lighter area, which may be a far off, you know, bit of light source. We'll put some up here too. And we paint them like this because I like painting dramatic looking skies. I don't ever like just a plain, you know, blue sky, or even just a plain little colorful sky like we have. I like to have some depth and shadows in it, some clouds. You know, I like stormy scenes versus a nice clear day. I like it to be nice and stormy. And if you guys like that, that's why you're here painting with us, right? You obviously must like what I do most of the time. Otherwise, you wouldn't come back. All right, now we got our little shadowy cloud. I mean, you can even leave it like that. It looks fantastic like that. But we're gonna throw some white in. Whitish, grayish. We're just gonna kind of figure it out as we go along. Now that I'm done with this mountainy, or the, uh, you know, our cloud mixture, we're gonna save that. I'm not gonna get rid of it. I'm gonna save it because we'll eventually make our mountains and our road and our trees and pretty much everything all out of these three colors because that's pretty much what we have for today. So why don't we take a little fan brush here and go right through our white, just on both sides. And again, we covered the, the canvas in Bob Ross liquid white to start. And that way you get these thick oil paints that'll blend. If you were on a dry canvas, you'd have these splotches of real dark color that you couldn't really do anything with. So let's see. Let me get some big old, big old honking cloud back in here. And you can see I've left space in between both places where I put the, the white paint down. And the reason for that is because as we blend very softly, we're not even blending. Blending is a bad word, right? We're not blending our clouds because they would go away. If we blended them, they would disappear. 
we're just kind of disturbing what the paint looks like so you've got this nice difference in color the brights and the darks right if we were to blend it all it would all kind of blend into this purple color that we've made again we'll come in with our white these don't even have to connect really you know what I mean? It's totally up to you what you want it to look like. And again, we're going to leave those spaces in between, depending on how thick our paint is, so we can get them to blend together. I don't want all my clouds kind of touching. I want to have you know bits of light, bits of dark, bits of light again. It's all about a play of dark and light, right? And here, and you could connect it if you wanted to. You could put one up here. It really doesn't matter what you do really doesn't. And we're going to come in just very lightly with our circles. Just kind of disturb what the paint looks like. Get those dark, those hard lines out of the way. And then we're going to have this real dramatic looking kind of stormy sky when we get done with it. I really like that. It's almost like we've got this storm kind of enveloping either our sun or moon whatever's back there. We're not going to put anything back there for this one. Take our two inch brush, go all the way to the top. Very lightly, right? You can hear how hard I'm swiping down here. Up here it's very light. You don't really want a lot of pressure or you'll blend your clouds right away and they'll be gone. They will be gone. I really like the way that looks. You wanted some darkness up in here, you could take the blue, right? Just kind of stick it in between. And again, we're going to come back and just blend out those hard line areas. All right now we've got a bit of this blue cloud rolling, which looks really neat actually. Let me take some more blue and we'll go kind of in between our two bits of white there. Maybe there's a bigger section underneath. And why don't we put some dark underneath this guy? The best part about painting to me is you can literally play with it until you like the way that it looks. And you can keep adding and adding and adding paint. You can, you know, leave it the way that we had it before. But the more colors and everything you put in there, the cooler it's going to look. All right, people that are going to come and look at your painting for, for details are going to see the blues and blacks and reds that we didn't really blend all the way into just one color. Right? You want to have these little differences in there. We've got our shadows under our clouds, shadows behind, clouds in front. And it's just a, it's turned into a really nice looking sky. And our one fan brush here just falling apart. I think this one may be towards the end of its life. No life left in him, this guy. Put a more bit of white up here. You don't, you don't have to use a fan brush when you're doing your clouds. You can use a one-inch brush or you know those big, big bush brushes. You can use your two-inch brush. It doesn't matter what you do. I just like the fan brush because it's got a, you know, a localized area where I can make certain shapes that I want to make. Right. It's turning out fantastic. Come up here. I love just making it up as we go along too. We're not following anything. This this sky doesn't look like any sky that I've ever painted before, and it just it's cool to see how something kind of comes together from nothing. You know what I mean? We didn't didn't have anything on here to start. And now we've got this wicked kind of storm rolling through. Let me make this a bit bigger. It's almost just too much white back there. And you never know what you're going to cover either. We may be wasting our time with everything below this line because it may all be covered in, in mountains or trees or whatever you decide to paint. But the fact is we'll know that it's there. We'll know what it looked like before we started dropping stuff on. So again, really like that. It's almost like we still got our little bit of light source back in there. Clouds are kind of rolling over. We've got our shadows and our dark areas and light areas. It's looking really nice. Meantime, we're going to chuck this old brush. Look at this. 
Look at this. Just every bristle is coming out. So we're gonna get rid of this old stuff. It's not even that old. That's the funny thing. It is not even that old. Some are just made better than others, I guess. Just gotta beat the devil out of that brush. All right, we'll get some, get some clean brushes and then we'll move forward. I'm always dabbing mine off on a paper towel afterwards. That's why you see me over here looking like I'm doing something besides cleaning the brush. Get your mind out of the gutter, guys. Always dab them off so that way they're nice and dry when you go to put them back up. You don't kind of smear something with some paint thinner you didn't think was on your brush. I think I'm using size 8 fan brushes today. Yeah, it doesn't matter what the size is. And then most likely when we go in to do our details and stuff, we'll use a little micro fan brush. And I was given these for Christmas uh, last year, and then I got the exact same set again this year. And I just, I like making the trees with a bigger brush and then coming in with this little smaller brush and you can just get more detail in there. But that'll come later on. All right. I know I want to have two mountains in it like the other one, so maybe the first one will be up here and the second one will be over here. And we'll just kind of have some, we'll just see what it looks like when we get there. So we're going to have a good amount of black and red and crimson. When you watch, I was watching, I painted along with Bob last week in my, uh, because this, this video, for all you live people, this video will come out on Saturday. So on Wednesday, for you YouTube guys, I painted with Bob and tried to follow along with one of his tutorials. And my mountains were not nearly as dark. Uh, same thing with the trees. It wasn't nearly as dark as, as what he had on screen. And it's because he makes up such a giant pile of paint when he's doing it. You know, you can never, even if you guys tried to match me right here, even if I told you, you know, get a quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, and then mix them, it would never be the same, exact same amount of paint. So don't worry if it doesn't look the same. Yours is going to look awesome. You know, you don't have to worry about it. We're going to use a small uh, palette knife today. You can use a big one, you can use a plastic one, you can use a butter knife if you wanted to. It really doesn't matter. We're going to take a little bit of white and just mix it in with our with our color down here and that way we're going to have two different color mountains. I want the farther one to be a little bit lighter and I want the closer up one to be a little bit darker. So we'll put some white in there and then we'll leave our one color real dark, okay? And it's going to blend with the stuff that's on the on the canvas anyway, so pull it out, get our little roll of paint just like Bob does. I don't know how well you can see it. Oh. And then we're going to come up here and just kind of make a decision on where this sucker lives, man. Especially on this canvas, you want it, you want your mountain dark because our whole sky is dark. You know what I mean? Maybe put some more dark in there just to make them stand out a bit more. Like that. Gonna scrape off some of this excess paint. It's going to make it easier to put our, our uh, highlight color on when we go to add some snow to this sucker. Uh, here, you don't have to go all the way to the edge. Okay, depending on what you're going to put down underneath, you don't have to span side to side. Especially because once we start blending, right, kind of left our lighter area over here. Because it looks lighter in the camera up to me. Everything looks like this big glare from our light that we have over here. And we're just going to blend it down. I told you, see, we'd lose some of those clouds underneath. But again, doesn't matter, it's going to be cool shadows for whatever we decide to put down there. I got a little, first little mountain back here. Who knows, maybe this one kind of wraps around and might connect to the other one. Like that. It all depends on how hard you're kind of pushing with your brush, depends on how big your mountain's going to grow, okay? By the way, today, for you people that don't know, I have now become an unemployed full-time artist and I'm thinking about starting some classes, some local classes if you live here in Las Vegas or we can kind of make a Zoom meeting and I can uh, teach you one-on-one -on -one if you need some more help besides the tutorials here if you're having trouble with it. And then we'll see if we can't, you know, make a living out of this sucker. Alright, so we've got our mountain down here, we're just going to 
just gonna make our big circles with it. Just kind of make this fog. Then our kind of mountain is just floating out in the middle of the air. Right. So it looks like anyway. We're gonna come in. We might have to get some more paint out of the box, guys. We'll put a little bit of crimson and blue with this. I'm not gonna overmix it. I don't want it to be purple. I want it to be red and blue and white. Okay. Might look cool when we go and put it on the mountain. Just gonna mix it up. That's a nice looking color right there. And we'll say I want to make it a little bit more blue. We'll make this the shadows of our the shadows of our mountain here. The shadows in the snow. Alright, we're gonna come down these kind of dark shadows that are. And you can tell by the way I'm holding my hand, right? We're not coming at it straight. Coming at it very vertical, almost to where the handle is touching the canvas down here. And that's going to make for these nice breaks that you're going to get with the, with the palette knife here. If you come at it at the wrong angle, the snow isn't going to break. And then you're going to have this you know, muddy mess up here. Come down. Really doesn't matter what it looks like. I like to do the shadows first. And then you can come back with your white and kind of play around a bit more. Maybe this shadow comes over to this side. You never know. You never know. But we're not going to go too far down because we're going to have our second mountain coming in from this side, okay? And then maybe we'll have a peak that connects to this guy down here. We'll figure it out. You know, take my white, mix it with just the littlest bit of our mountainy color, so it's just kind of grayish. Mostly white, a little bit of grayish color. And then we'll come up here and just, whoosh, just make these quick moves. You can see how the paint breaks like that, right? Just like it does on a real mountain. You got these rocks that stick up through the snow. We'll take this sucker, we'll come down and we'll make a little hill there. And now we've pushed our shadow back behind, you know, this nice bit of our snow colored paint. We're making long strokes and we're not going to go over it too many times because that's going to make it, you know, we're going to cover, we're going to smash all those little cool breaks that we made. Okay, so you want to not necessarily do it quickly, but do it in less attempts. Right? Don't keep going over the same spot over and over and over again. It's just going to mush those bits and we're not going to have those breaks that we want. Right, come up here. Be mindful of your angles, right? You pull it straight down, it's going to look like straight down. Pull it to the side or the side or straight sideways, you're going to change the angle of your mountain. Okay, maybe we've got a little bit up on this guy, just on the side of him. So let's say we got this ridge that comes down, wraps around, and it comes down around here. Before we get too far ahead of that, though, because I want to have some fog in between, we're just going to swipe up on these guys, right? Come with our, with our brush, just like Bob does. We're going to make that fog. You can even get some of that liquid white from down here, and kind of make that fog. Swipe up very gently. It's your test of gentleness, okay? I'm going to be very gentle with it. Oh, we're definitely going to need some more white paint, guys. And then maybe we've got this other little bit of mountain that comes down like this. You never know. You never can tell. Okay? Take a little bit of that snow, kind of mash it over with these little bits of our shadow over here. And just see what it looks like. And all you got to do is just play with it until you like the way that it looks. And that is that. If you don't like it, I'm going to have this negative kind of attitude about it, which is, you know, in turn with the universe, going to make other people not like it. So I'm going to take that fog, a little bit of that white paint, come up and just kind of fog up the bottom of our mountain there. And now we've got this, you know, difference. Maybe there's a fog rolling, you know, there's a cloud rolling in over our mountaintop, right? It's coming down. Shit, that looks so good. I might even just leave it one mountain. These bits over here. Okay, we're going to come.
come back to our darker paint pile now, right? Mix all this light stuff up back into our darker paint pile. And why don't we do another bit of mountain that maybe lives over here? I come down through that. See, maybe this little ridge connects with that little ridge. You never can tell until you do it. So do it. Try something. Don't just copy somebody your whole life. Try something new. You might just end up liking it. It almost looks like this thing wraps around and then goes back up now. The way that we've done it, we can put one over here. A little bit of a, a bit of a darker mountain. Maybe that one just kind of sticks out on its own. Maybe it comes up on the side. Maybe in our world. My little world, this one does for sure, because it's right there. It's there and it's not going away, baby. Okay, let's take this and finish down the sides, right? Come down here, just kind of blend it in. The reason we put this other little bit of paint in there is just to give it another different shade of color. Once you start up here, it's going to get very light as you go down, so I want a little bit more darkness down here, and that way we can have these differences in color and it'll look like a little hill or a valley or something. It down. Like I said, maybe that one. Oh, maybe it, now it does. It connects up here, guys. All depends on how we highlight it. Right, pull it down. Put this guy down here. And just kind of blend them at the bottom. Be mindful of your angles. Just kind of blend it. Harder to do. You get more strokes with this little one inch brush, but I like it. Yeah, it almost looks like this guy comes down and connects. So we'll put that snow over there. Like that one's kind of leading off, going into the back. What we didn't do, if you're brave enough, you can take a little bit of that darker color and just darken up these shadows just a little bit. I get these deep shadows back there in the mountain. This guy coming off. And remember, we're trying to leave a little bit of that fog in between. So I don't cover it all, but if you wanted to, you can make some dark crevices back there, like the paint, you know, the sun's really kind of just struggling to reach those areas or the light source or wherever, whatever we're talking about. Maybe not the sun, maybe it's the moon in this one. You never know. But it's really struggling to reach those areas back there. Wherever you put a little bit of of dark, you want to have some light to kind of bounce off of it, right? I kind of like how this one's going to connect over here. Just like that. And then we'll make these highlights a lot brighter. And we added the gray for back here, so these ones will just do plain white. We added the uh, blue and the crimson, so maybe up here we'll just do the blue. Speaking of cleaning brushes, let's clean these suckers. Clean them off real quick. Bob always talks about that being the most fun part of this kind of painting style, and he's almost right. I think the funnest part is being able to watch this thing come together out of your brain, you know what I mean? We're not really looking at anything. And by the time you get done, sometimes I'll step back and I'll go, wow, I can't believe it came out that well. I try to let the canvas tell me where to go. You know what I mean? Like the way that we blended it down here, just randomly blended it. I can see that there may be a bit of trees coming in on this side or maybe some of them are gonna cross over in front and you know, we can have that fog in our little roadway at the back if we're trying to make it like the one that sold, right? I can paint all of my brush again. All right, the fan brushes, we don't really need to clean you know, we're going to get them super dirty with our our uh, tree color anyway. So, I'm not going to worry about that. But for now, we're going to get some of that blue and white again. Make our little shadowy color. Going to try to make it a different blue than the blue that's back there, though. And I don't want the exact same blue. Maybe we'll put a bit more white with this guy. 
There we go. That's a pretty blue. A Prussian blue. It's just a pretty looking blue. All right, maybe we got some over here. Nice and thick on this guy. And it comes down. And remember, we're going to have some stuff underneath here, so you don't have to go all the way to the bottom. And that guy comes around. And there's a big, big bit of shadow down there. We'll have some white over here. This guy is kind of covered in white, so maybe there's some shadow. You never know. That's why I like putting the shadows on first, though. Because you can always even just go over and cover your shadow with a, a bit of white highlight paint. And then it'll be gone. You know what I mean? But once you start doing the white first, you do your highlights first, then you got to try to come in and just get the littlest bit of shadow in between without trying to mess it up. So let's put our shadows on first. Just in different places. You don't want to cover everything. You want to have some of the darker color of your mountain kind of shining through, which doesn't make sense, dark shining through, but you know, that's what we say around here. There's a bit of white. Maybe there's a, a bit blue just come all the way down in here. It does not matter. All right. All right, Josh, what have you done? You have made a mess on this canvas, right? That's what we do around here. We make a mess, right? Make, let's see, make a mess as we do it across the screen. Let's come up here. Again, I don't want this side super bright, right? If, this, if, the, if our light source is back there behind the clouds, we may have a little bit of white here and there. But on this side especially, we're not going to have much white. It's going to be a lot of shadows until we get about here. Then we're going to have that light kind of hitting our mountain. So just remember that when you're, when you're doing your paintings. You got this little bit of thing down in here. It all depends on how you hold the knife. You know what I mean? We're holding it very straight to the canvas. It kind of went up a little bit too high there. Very straight. And that way we're not going to kind of cover over all these breaks that the, that the paint is just doing on its own, right? The craziest thing to me. That this paint will just do it for you. Come on, maybe that shadow, a little bit too much, so we'll just kind of connect them like that. You never know, you may step back and look at it and not like the way that it looks. But for right now, maybe this guy comes down. Just like that. Gotta make those noises, guys, or it doesn't work, I'm telling you. The sun up here. You know what? We'll make a little peek out of that right there. A little peek. Got our shadow in between. Maybe it goes down this way. We got this little you know, bit of the hill that comes down over here. Just kind of make up your own little stories for it. Like Bob always said. You, know, you make up a little story for it. You got places for your bears to live and places for the little critters and all that. And it just makes it more fun to, uh, to paint. I'm just going to have a little bit of our white. Just a couple little light areas in our mountain over here. Not too many. Right, this guy's in, in the, a lot in the shade of where our light source is. So we're not going to have too many of them. And then down here around the bottom, we're going to make our fog, right? So we've got all these dark colors. We're going to make our fog out of that white down there. Scrape up all the rest of that. Just kind of finish over the sides, a little bit of the shadowy color, a little bit of our white. And it is only for the buyer, right? You guys won't see it. Unless you buy it, then you will see it. But it's only for the buyer. And again, Having a finished edge is going to make someone, as they see it hanging up on your wall, they're going to want to turn around. They're going to want to come around the front to see what's on there if they can see that the sides are finished. It's going to make them kind of wonder what's what's back there that I'm missing. Like, what am I missing back here? I need to see. A couple little bit of a little ridge over here, maybe. And just like that, we literally made a mess. And it looks fantastic on the camera. Look at that. Look at that. 
got this fog in the back, got our little our highlights. You can even add some more if you wanted to, if you're brave. Right, got this kind of bit connecting with that bit of the mountain. Got a little shadowy area right there, which we can make a lot more pronounced if you add a little bit of that dark color in there. Right, right up along the edge. But again, leave a little bit of room in between. You don't want to have it all, you know, color on top of color on top of color. And you don't need too much of that dark paint. You just want enough. That'll give you these real distinct shadows, like there's a big ridge right there. And maybe over here, the sun, our light source, is just really struggling to get all the way over here. Every so often, here and there, there and here, and just add a little bit of that dark color. And you don't want too much, but you want some of it. Again, the more you go over all these little breaks, the less of them you're going to have. Look at that. Looks like freaking big, gigantic rocks that didn't get covered in snow out there. I really like it. You know what? We can even take this up. I kind of like the way that it looks like that. Bring this one down. You can do whatever you set your mind to, baby. Now we can still see we've got this little area of fog. We've got this mountain that kind of comes in and connects to that mountain up there. There's a bit more shadow over here. So coming through, you know what I mean? You just literally make it up as you go along and you'll get these wicked, wicked scenes that you would never think. You'd never be able to... You never think you could do that? You can do that. You can do it. I'm telling you. I did it. I watched Bob Ross a couple months. I finally got the set. Started doing it. My first painting came out really good. I knew I was going to have a future in art. And, uh... You know, now we're just kind of making it up as we go along. People seem to like it. And, um, you know, I'm going to try to make a little career out of it. That is my goal. And you can see how I'm rotating the brush per the angle of how we laid the snow down, right? It just kind of softens it, gives it that foggy feel. Right? And then if we came up on this side, then we're just going to swipe up on that side. Came up this way, we're going to swipe up this way. Again, not worrying about what happens underneath here. Just worried about the, tips, the tip tops of the mountains right now. Okay. It just kind of gives them this blurry effect. Like you would see on a camera. They're not, not really in focus. Right? Got our little fog. Bring the fog up there. Don't matter. It does not matter. Now, why don't we have two sets of trees coming in, okay? So again, we're going to mix up our black, and blue, and crimson. Get our same kind of purpley color, but you're never going to be able to mix it the exact same amount, so it's going to change. It's going to look different, which is the coolest thing. You grab the same three colors, mix them up, and they're never going to be the exact same color. You can even throw some of that blue in there. Don't matter. Cause it don't matter, no. Take this guy. All right, gonna wiggle it. And then who knows? We'll come down from over here. See, we got some big old suckers, right? Big old monster trees on this side. Remember, leave room for what you're going to put underneath. Maybe our next trees will be a little bit bluer. Come over here. We're just going to get lighter and lighter and lighter because we're going to have a whole other set come in front of these guys. Okay. You want them nice and thick at the top so they stay nice and pointy. Right, nice and thick paint up at the top. Flip it over, use the other side. You don't want them to be all the same level, right? We're kind of like a heartbeat monitor. Going up, going down, until we get to the end. Right. 
doesn't matter. We're going to cover that anyway. Scrape up all the stuff we didn't use, which is not a lot. We had a we used a fair amount. And then why don't we get just some blue, a little bit of black, but a lot of bit of blue, right? So I'm going to throw in some white in these ones. You can tell they're going to be a lot bluer than those ones over there. So we're going to pick up some of that liquid white down here and just come through and just make our fog out of these, okay? Just by tapping against the, tapping against it. I mean, you can even come up here and you can see the fog, okay? Just tapping. And then just very lightly, we're just going to go back and disturb those little tap marks, okay? Now we've got this bit of foggy forest that's kind of coming down this hill from this side over here, okay? Come back in with our much bluer trees. Maybe these ones are a bit colder. They're in the shadow. Maybe they're a bit colder. We're not going to make them as high as this one. Right. We'll come over here. Oh, yeah. Those are looking good. We're going to drop them down underneath our fog. Right. So now we've got these two layers with this little bit of foggy mist in between them. Right. Cover the side. I'm going to cover the side. I almost forgot. Let me just go all the way down with that dark. There we go. Just fill in a couple little areas, and you can tell the color difference back there, right? It looks like two bits of forest that are going to crisscross in front of each other. I don't really want to mess with the tops. We want those to be nice and thick, but we want to kind of muddy up the bottom of them. Come back in again. You can grab a little white on your on your brush. I'm just gonna come back and fog those up. See how the white tip of the brush is kind of making that fog, right? And eventually, it's all gonna be this same kind of grayish, purplish color underneath. Okay, we're gonna swipe up on these front ones, real pointy. Right? Again, you don't have to worry about what's underneath here. You can literally take it. Blend it out. Now we've got our little little bit down here that we're that we can mess with, okay? Some of that fog up the edges. Get this nice same little color. Okay, now we could stick a road back there like we did last time. You could fill it full of trees and just have snow at the bottom if you wanted to. It's totally up to you, these, these paintings. You never you, can, you literally have full control of what this scene is going to look like, okay? Swipe up on these, just giving these real sharp points to it. And the ones in the back, just a little bit. That way it'll look like tons of little trees back in there. You can even take them. If you're looking for something cool every so often, just take a little line on your biggest guys and just give them a little tree trunk. Not all on the same, you know, horizon, but just a little tree trunk. It just kind of separates all that color from being the same. And you get this little trunk of a tree. Those are much farther off in the distance than the other ones, right? You can't even barely see it on the camera. But I can see it up here. And when I look at a painting and I'm looking for details, I'm going to see these cool little bits that we've added. Let's a bit of a trunk on this guy over here. A little bit thicker. Okay. These ones don't really much matter at the bottom. You can even take, if you wanted to, and put a couple, just a couple little snowy highlights on these guys. Okay. Not too much different places. Or you can leave them nice and dark, totally up to you. And that's what I love about painting. It doesn't matter what I do, if you want to do something different, you can, and it'll look just as good. Okay, let's figure out what we're going to do here. We've got this big hill in our mind coming down, right? All this color from it. This hill coming down, maybe our road goes back in here, 
I made this size a little bit flatter, so we've got some trees, you know, some big old trees. Maybe we'll throw, I don't know how well you guys can see, you can, you can see the painting back here behind this one. It's got this big old wicked kind of tree that's kind of grown up, got all these limbs coming over the top. I love painting dead trees like that. We may just have to do that. We may just have to do that, guys. I'm just going to put a little bit, just on this hill, a little bit of black, just straight black trees. Okay. It's coming down, just like that. And you can keep filling up this whole painting with, you know, bits of forest like that. You can just keep going down if you wanted to. You literally could. Totally up to you. We're not going to, but you literally could. Oh no, just touch my shirt. Thought I had my apron on. Okay, let's do, now we've got this nice little foggy area back here where we can't really tell what's happening. Take our black and blue mixture, right? Gonna fix our canvas right here. Prop them up on the lip of the easel that always gets in my way when I get down to the bottom. Painted with me before. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, again, we'll just do our road like it's just going to disappear off into the distance. You always want your road to be much thicker down the bottom than you think it needs to be. Right? You got to get your perspective right. And I struggle with it. So it's almost like we're painting this little pyramid down the bottom. All right, what that's gonna do is make it like we're standing on a road and it's getting further and further off in the distance until we can't see it anymore. And we can take our one inch brush, just kind of create this fog around the top of that pyramid and now you can't tell where the road kind of ends, right? And if you're spinning you know, to the left, making circles to the left. You can even take it and kind of turn it up like it's going, you know, the road's going off that way. If you spin to the right, it's going to be different. And then we can always go back in and fix that road. And come up out of the lines. Okay, what's it look like on the cam? That's pretty good. Why don't we lower this down just the littlest bit? Painting for about 50 minutes and 32 seconds. Well, that's not true. I had to get my colors onto the palette and stuff, so. Let's get some color over here, just so it's not white. Some stuff over here. Yeah, it almost looks like we've turned, you know, up this hill. We're gonna put a tree in front of it anyway. And maybe the road goes back through the forest and starts climbing up the mountain that way. So, all you guys watching on Facebook, you get to see the unedited version when on my YouTube channel, the videos are usually a little bit quicker because I'm taking out a lot of points where I'm just standing there going, what am I gonna paint? And what do I do from here? I'm gonna need a lot of color for this. I need a lot of paint because our tree is on this 18 by 24, especially if you start down from the bottom down here, it'll be real tall. Okay, so we're gonna just mix up all that dark color paint, the black, you know, you saw the pile in the beginning, it was humongous. We're almost down to not having much left. All right, gonna wiggle it through. Bob sits there, goes like this. Makes his piles on his palette jacket. No wonder he has such a big palette. He makes these gig huge, gigantic piles of paint. Okay, and then off to the side of our road, maybe up into this fog, we'll have this tree that lives up here. And you guys know me, I like painting upward facing evergreen trees, right, where the limbs are reaching up to the sky. Okay, I don't like the saggy old ones that Bob Ross likes to paint. And so in order to do that, we just use the corner and start pushing up this small motion upwards, right? And that just kind of gives you these upward facing branches. Do a little guy off to the side over here. He may be the same size, but he is much further away. Remember, all your trees don't have to 
They don't have to be the same thickness or the same height or anything like that. It is totally up to you. I'm going to put a little bush off the side of this guy, right? Come over there and then we'll do another big guy up here. And let me come right up into this mouth. All right, here our big old trunk. So like, no, what did you just do? All right, it starts to mix together. Get the littlest bit of paint thinner onto your brush, just a little bit, okay, not a lot. And just start coming down. Obviously, if these guys are bigger to us, we're making the branches a lot bigger, right? And we want them nice and thick to where when you pull the when you pull the paintbrush away, you want to have these thick, almost like little drip marks that come off of the canvas because the paint is so thick on there. And that gives you all those cool little you know, textured little bits of branches and pine needles and all that stuff. That's how you get that look. Okay, so we got the, the right of our road all done. We can do some more over here. Make up a little bit more color. See how much see how much paint there is there? I mean, it's a, it's a huge bit that when you start flattening it out, it spreads all over your palette. Just scrape it up, go back in, get some more. Right, maybe this guy's a little bit taller over here. And we got this very thick bit of tree. Again, it doesn't have to be the same. On each side, you can leave gaps in it. it sort of looks cool if you do it that way. It sort of looks cool. Our tree trunks is very tall, very nice and pointy, sharp, if you will. Can you take some of that dark color, since that's all we really have. Just make some trunks for your tree. That real dark color, right? This guy back here doesn't need much. Some nice thick trunks when we go over. When we go over it with our our uh, highlight color, you'll be able to see some of this trunk sticking out, or sticking through, right? It's thicker down at the bottom. But don't worry about it being straight or whatever. We're gonna cover it anyway. Okay. This is looking really neat. thought I would have to go back in and get more paint. I thought we would have had plenty of paint today. A little bush off the bottom of that guy. And what I've got now is got the real sloppy liquid white paint that we initially primed our canvas with. I'm going to mix that with some of our Prussian blue. Really get in there and mix it. This stuff becomes very sloppy and, and uh, wet. This is what gives us our wet on wet technique, right? This is the on wet bit. First you cover it with a wet paint, and then you put wet paint on top of wet paint. Why don't we go in here just with our biggest tree first. We'll use the same size fan brush. Right, come over again. We're just kind of touching and going down. Not going to cover up all those shadows. I right, don't want to have too many highlights. Just kind of stay on those bushes that we, you know, those little branches that we created. Just want to stay on those. And right, the more you touch, the more it's going to kind of mess up those real thick textured areas, okay? Now that we've got that dark paint on our brush, along with the, you know, we can even take, let me do this little bushy guy back here. Come up like that. Don't want to cover everything. Do one over here in the front. I'm going to have him 
separated enough to where there's these dark areas in between. Those are your shadows. You don't want to lose all that depth, right? As I was saying, as we come back with that darker paint, it's going to make these ones that look further away, we're naturally going to dull the paint. Okay, we're not going to have to mix anything. The more and more that we go over these dark tree color shadows, the more our paint is going to, you know, get darker naturally. That way we won't have to mix it on the palette. And again, we don't want to cover up every bit of shadow. You want to have some shadows in there, okay? I'm going to switch to my smaller little fan brush. A little teeny little fan brush now. Some of that paint. We'll make some of that black in there too. Because we don't want these ones in the back as detailed as the ones in the front. Go down to the bottom like that. Over here. Not putting on, not touching as much. And the closer you get down the bottom, you want to have this dark area in between those so you don't come with the light on top of the light, okay? Wipe that sucker off. Pull this out. Don't really have to do much for the these other ones. Get a little bit of fog. Fix our little roadway. Should have really taken this one and pulled it out before we put this one in front, but you know, it's what it is. Let's pick a branch. It's totally up to you the way you want it to look. You know what I mean? Now we've left this space where we can uh, we can put another giant evergreen tree and it'd be nice and quick and be done. Or we can do, you know, a big kind of scraggly arm tree. Kind of have the best of both worlds, right? And in the meantime, we're going to take our yardstick. If you don't have a yardstick, they're like $2 at Lowe's. Go buy a yardstick. It helps give you somewhere to rest your hands so you don't have to float, you know, over and try to make these real small details, okay? So for our road, we have it come nice and thin back there, and then the closer we get to us, the more of a line we're going to make, right? It's a very sloppy line, okay? Don't judge me. We're going to show you how to fix it. Show you how to fix it, okay? These ones very thin, and then the thicker we, you know, closer we come to us, the thicker it's going to get. Which may mean that you need to go back in and kind of extend it more and more the closer we get down to us, okay? You want to have this little bit. Here we go. You want to have a bit of your dark roadway in between your the lines of your snow. Okay? Speaking of which, take a little bit of a little bit of just titanium white and throw in some snow on the side of our road. Just like that, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect. I think it got left out and now it's all jaggedy. There we go, that's much smoother. Much smoother. Okay, again, don't worry about the straightness of the line right now. Don't worry about the straightness, we're going to fix it. I'm going to grab our uh, filbert brush, okay? Back here at the end, we can take just some of that liquid white, maybe some of the titanium white, and we'll just kind of create that fog just by spinning it, okay? Just so it's disturbed back there. It doesn't, it doesn't have to look. You can't see the end of the road, okay? And then to straighten up our lines, we're going to take that filbert brush again, push it real tight against the canvas, and just fill in or erase the areas that we don't want. 
you can get this nice little straight line, okay? Again, very flat to the canvas. And it will literally erase the stuff that you don't want on there. I have to go the other way for this guy. Like that. You can just work at it. If you get it right on the first go, then well done. Not work at. You can always go back in. It's the good thing about this liquid white is it just disappears when you blend it away. So if you think your line needs to be a little bit thicker or thinner, then it will literally disappear when you brush it away. Shape it however you want. Okay, go back in. Get a bit of titanium white and you can make a little cloud back there. Just by disturbing it. You don't want to fully mix it away. You just kind of want to disturb it. Throw this one away. Okay, we'll come back with our road. Next line is a little bit thicker and a little bit longer. A little bit thicker and a little bit longer, okay? Maybe that. This one down here. And there's something up with this road line on this side that I'm going to fix. And who knows? Maybe you want one. It's got the double line, right? You don't have to paint the same thing every time. You can do whatever you want. Right? And we have this double line. As straight as we can get it. The more and more that you mess with these little bits of, of liquid white, the more it's gonna blend in with the color of our road, okay? So again, you don't wanna do it quickly, but you wanna do it in less attempts. All right, I'm gonna show you guys what I was talking about. Literally take that line, blend it away, right? It's the best part about liquid white. Literally erase the sucker and it's gone. You can start again. Right? If you tried to do that with just some acrylic paint, you'd be in trouble. It's all about the perspective of your lines. If your lines don't look right, the painting's not going to look right. So, make it thicker down here at the bottom. Straight as you can get it, thinner at the top, okay? Again, always come back in. Just get rid of the, the hard lines on that. Just kind of make this fog go over the front of our road, okay? Now we're gonna throw in our giant tree over here. All right, so again, we're gonna mix up, you know, our same three colors that we had. We didn't have many colors to start off with today. So we're gonna keep using the same things, but because we're mixing them, you know, differently each time, they're going to look different. Slightly, but they're gonna look different. I don't use the filbert brush since we already got them all dirty. And who knows? I want this one to be close. So why don't we just throw this big old honking branch off there? You guys are like, oh no, what have you done? What have you done? That poor painting, oh my god. I'm not gonna fill them all in down here. Oh, Josh, it was looking so good. You went and screwed it all up. Just trust, okay? Just trust me. I'm going to make it 
darker than the trees behind it, right? We can go back in with a towel knife and really give it some texture and stuff. Just in the meantime, that's what she's going to look like. And we'll put a big bush over the top, of it, okay? And we'll see if this brush wants to play ball or not. five or six dips into our paint thinner and roll this sucker. You can see the paint thinner is kind of trying to run off my palette right now. Roll it through the paint so it holds a lot of paint inside this little script liner that Bob has, right? I haven't used this thing in ages. And then we'll just start making little, little extensions to our branches, right? It's not going to work for up there. This thing's too old. And at least for the thicker bits. Get it to work there. Who knows? Maybe you got one coming off the back and it wraps around the side and it comes over here and we can't even see where it goes, right? Now, this could take the longest part of your painting, making all these little tree trunks and branches. Right, the thicker the branch is at the end, the thicker the bit needs to be holding it up or it's not going to look right, okay? And we got one that comes out here. So you got this thicker bit holding it on, right? And this one comes out in front of the tree. It's a nice thick branch. Comes up that way, maybe this guy hangs down that side onto there. It just kind of puts it in front of that pine, this other pine tree. Okay. All that paint thinner. Start making these nice little sharp branches. All which ways. They don't all have to be the same. You know what I mean? You don't want them to be the same. But the paint thinner isn't going to last forever, okay? So make sure you have enough. When you go up there and you start seeing the little holes in the paint, like it's just running too thin, go back to your paint thinner, grab some more. You want it to flow easily across the canvas, okay? Want to flow easily. If it doesn't flow easily, you don't have enough paint thinner. You're gonna get these weird kind of looks to it. Right? And just wherever you want. It can go off the top, it can go off to the side. You got branches kind of crisscrossing over each other. And this guy comes in front of that guy, goes over here. You just want it to be thick enough to be able to hold all that up, okay? There's another guy that comes off that way. Old sagger. And then we got this. Just start filling in those gaps where there's not, you know, where you got the space. Just fill it in. Fill it in, go back, get your paint thinner, come back up, get some more. Just go nuts. Make a mess. Have fun. All right, let it grow. You can imagine in the, in the summertime, all, this, all these branches are just full of leaves and you can't even see the tip top of the mountain back there. I have it in the wintertime now, all this stuff has fallen off. Got cold, landed on our road, blew away. Some cars come and take it away. Right? So just get creative. Get creative. Take a step back and look at it every so often, right? We need some off to this side. Or this one needs one over here. Or whatever.
keep going as long as you want or as short as you want. Doesn't have to look like mine. It has to look like yours. Remember, if your branches start getting big and thick out towards the end, you gotta make them thicker, you know, thicker bits that are holding them up too. Can't have a big thick branch at the end with this little teeny stick holding it on. Don't make them come off at the same points, right? This one's down, come up, and the next one off the other side. Don't want to have them all coming off in the same place. There we go. It's starting to look good. The more you put on, the better it looks. We got all these little bits kind of crossing, crisscrossing back and forward in front of each other, all this entangled mess, right? That's what's going to make it look real. They don't all have to be the same color. You just want them in there somewhere, right? Oh, right in front of the tip of that mountain. Bam! Just kind of hides it back in there a bit. And what we can do is just kind of give these trees some little bark feel here. Bring it down, just wiggle it. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna make the trunk real textured, but for up here, kind of get a little bit of that thick paint. And just kind of wiggle down in different places of your thickest branches. You know, when you're standing at it or if you're looking at it in the right angle, it'll make it look like bark on those tree branches. Just on your thickest ones though. the way that's coming out. Looking good. This one should be darker down here, so I'm going to just go in with that black. Just kind of fill them in with that black. Really make it stand out against that background. Good guys. Remember to finish the sides because when someone sees it, they're gonna look at the sides first. Be walking down your hallway and they're gonna go, wow, what is that? I wanna come around and see. Okay, let's get some liquid white now. And we'll just kind of go over some of our bigger branches that are holding it up, we'll give it that little bit of this snowy, snow-covered feel, okay? Take a bit of our liquid white and our titanium white, just mix those up together. Almost like a bit of snow got caught up on this branch. Again, you don't want to cover all of your branches. kind of highlighting the sides and not all in the same spot. we went along turned out pretty well to me now with the last 
last bit of our, our thick paint, right? Instead of wasting it, we're just going to very lightly mix it and then come over here and just start adding some trunk bark on our tree trunk, okay? It's kind of going from both sides, kind of meeting in the middle and not covering it all. Okay, don't want to cover all the sucker. And you got this big, thick, textured bit of a trunk. Just like we do the mountains, right? Nice little bit of texture. Just like we do on the mountains. And then we can come back in. We don't have much uh, titanium white left, but we can come back in on the edges. Just kind of pull it over that bit of dark paint very lightly. And we got this little kind of snowy bark. Not too much on that side. Show you what our tree branches look like, how they separate from the, the back of the mountain back here where it's kind of dark. Totally up to you. side, and we got our light side of the tree. A little light side. And kind of pulling almost in a circle. Where you start a little bit, you go down and to the side. Okay, that thing looks really good. Pretty good. little bit of paint that we have left since I don't want to don't want to throw it away we might as well use it on this I fill up our brush real thick again I right, come down here just make another giant bit of a bush down here super textured though real thick come around the side Back to our little highlight brush. We're just, you know, we're not going to cover up all the all the shadows or all the snow. We want it to be different. You know, it's a little bit darker from the one back here. Got a little one inch brush, and then you just use this liquid white stuff that's down here. There we go. Now we got a little bit of. Snow on each side of our road, looking good. Maybe a little bit darker back here. So we're going to take that, like so. On the sides of our road there, shoot, you can even put little tire tracks. drive over the same bit of road so much you start noticing there's, there's tire tracks there all the time. That thing looks really good guys. Painted for about an hour and 23 minutes and 19 seconds. Not the whole time painting though. I've got a lot of washing of brushes to do so if you guys liked how this painting turned out it'll be available on Etsy. Etsy.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. Of course subscribe right here I'm showing the YouTube people guys subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, free tutorials different stuff stuff you might not have tried before and you know it'll look like this when you get done so subscribe to my channel follow me on Instagram uh, happy little landscapes at happy little landscapes Facebook guys search face uh, search Facebook for at happy landscape art and go to my Etsy shop etsy.com slash shop slash happy landscape art you can buy the hats, you can buy the paintings, you can buy the pillows. I can have one right here. A little pillow, a little seascape on a pillow, right? Buy the pillows, the phone cases, the t-shirts, everything. Everything I have. 
Etsy.com slash shop slash Happy Landscape Art. I want to thank you guys for sticking with me. And thank you guys for sticking with me. And uh, like I said, I had fun painting it. Hope you guys had fun. If you did, follow my channel, subscribe to my channel, follow my pages, and everything else. So I'm going to stop rambling on, and we're going to say goodbye. See you guys later. This is where all the bloopers come in. Hey guys, Josh, happy landscape. Oh my god. Brushes. If you, sir, or you, ma'am, you want to learn how to paint this painting right here, I know you do. I know you. That's the perfect thing about editing. <laughs> Serious. Last time. Alright, we're going to start over. Hey guys, Josh, happy little landscapes. Today. Oh my god. Okay, that's it. I can't. I can't make a fool of myself anymore.